Hey guys, hi, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me today. It is Wednesday, I don't even know what the date is, but it's the Wednesday before Memorial Day. <laughs> I do know that. My name is Tracy and I'm here on the Dixie Belle Paint page and we are going to do um, some prep work tonight, some just basic old boring prep work that no one ever likes to talk about, but it is so important, especially when you are about to do a lot of detail work on a piece, which I have planned for this little piece behind me right here. Hey, Jasmine, you are with me tonight. Thank you for being here. Um, you guys say hey when you come on, please. Hi, and let me know that you're here and where you're tuning in from. Hey, Desiree, how are you doing? Good to see you guys. Let your let your friends know that we're on, y'all. Um, I would love, love, love to say hello to you. Hey, hey, Valerie. Valerie Vickers, good to see you. Hey, Christine, how are y'all? I am so excited, y'all, that I'm going to do Wednesday nights here. Not next Wednesday. We've got one more Wednesday with Brittany, and then after that, I'm going to be here on Wednesday nights. It's going to be my spot right here at this time, and we're going to call it Whimsical Wednesdays, and I am super, super excited about that because being at the same place every week like some of the other girls are already doing it allows us to build on pieces which i really like the idea of connie i looked for um a transfer for you today and I actually have an answer um they don't i don't have the pantry one i don't but i have one that says bakery so i don't know if they have one that says pantry that's like that but um i'll message you and let you know anyway it allows uh, us to work, on, build a piece, and we can do a bare piece. Um, and we did that with uh, the bed that I did with you guys, the boho yellow bed, and I really, really enjoyed that. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Hey, Janice from New Mexico, good to see you guys. I am Tracy's Fancy in San Antonio, Texas, down here in San Antonio, Texas, and um, I am a Dixie Bell brand ambassador and I love working with Dixie Bell so, so very much. So very much. Christy and Roxy, hey you guys, y'all just keep coming on saying hello and we're gonna get started. Um, we are, I'm gonna try to keep this one about 30 minutes tonight since we're just doing prep work. Unless you guys have some really good questions, this is a really good time to ask that. The reason for doing this is tonight, so many times I hear from y'all that you are too overwhelmed and you don't know where to start. And a lot of you watch regularly and you still haven't picked up a paintbrush and tried painting for the very first time. And it is really sad to me because <laughs> it's so much fun and you can't mess it up. You really can't. Or, okay, that's a lie. You totally can mess it up. But it's just paint and you just... You know, you might have to sand back a little bit. You just start over. Or, you know what, maybe you found a, a piece in your house that you didn't like that much anyway, and you might kick it to the curb because you're so discouraged. But um, I want to encourage you to try it. And uh, prepping your piece is really, really important. So I want to show you this piece that I've got right here. I'm putting gloves on because we're going to give it a good cleaning. This, some of you guys have may seen something like this before. It's a book table. I got it from Hobby Lobby. I've had this in my den. It is not my style at all. It's uh, dark brown. It's kind of cool. It's kind of tchotchke-ish, you know. Uh, it reminds me of one of those old stores that used to be in the mall. What was that called? It started with a B. Do y'all remember it? What was, um, Eddie, you're saying, yes, that's you. You have all that stuff at your chicken. Don't be chicken, okay? Don't be chicken. Start with something small like this. This piece is not that big. It's maybe not even two feet tall. Um, pretty good size, it's like an end table. Bombay, thank you, Lori, that's what it's called, it's Bombay. So, uh, Bombay had, you know, really cool stuff like this, and this is what it reminds me of, but this is from Hobby Lobby, and I actually think the price tag is still on it, let me see. Yes, the price tag is still on it. So, it was $149.99, which is nuts to me, you know, because I'm a Facebook Craigslist Marketplace shopper. Um, but I did get it at a 30% off, but I think, I don't remember. It was a hundred bucks. It was a hundred bucks. The reason I bought this thing was because, so it reminds you of World Bazaar, Valerie. Um, you, you guys are all so familiar with Bombay. Do y'all miss it? It was a sad day when Bombay closed, wasn't it? And I have painted a lot of Bombay furniture in my time. 
Amy, I'm so glad you're on. I was gonna talk about you. I just watched one of your videos real quick. As you guys know, when you're a brand ambassador or a painter or you're running a business or, you know, we don't, a lot of us don't have a moment to even watch anyone else's videos. We're so caught up in making and creating our own things. And so today, when I was prepping for this, I was like, well, I wanna do something I've never done. So I want you guys to help me and doing something that I've never done, but I thought I'd seen other Dixie Bell girls do it, and so I YouTubed it real quick, and Amy came up, and so I watched Amy's video. So I'm gonna hold off on telling you what that is. So y'all are saying that you have one. I've painted one of these before. Um, I I bought this originally to go in my house to hide the ugly um, router boxes that were by my TV by the fireplace. They were showing, you could see them and it was ugly. And any table I tried to put in front of them had legs and I, you could, I mean, what good does that do? You can see the router boxes right through the legs, right? So I liked that this was a big block and um, it hid them, but it just didn't match my style anymore. So uh, I did paint one of these for one of my grandbaby's nurseries and I ended up doing it in um, kind of boho funky colors. And then this, uh, hers, we did in, we made each book of fairy tale books. So like we did Cinderella and we did Beauty and the Beast and Snow White and I used uh, stamps, like alphabet stamps and molds, and it was really, really cute. We made it into, every single book was a different princess and a different fairy tale book. So, yes, Elaine, yes, you, you can't see through it, and the router and all stuck back there. And y'all, it's very functional. They're, they're real drawers, like they're legit drawers, and they really do work. And this one down here is really deep. So, you know, we would keep all kinds of stuff in there, actually the, for the grandkids. So, um, this is what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna clean it up. So when you're looking at a piece like this, you, I really have no idea what this is made out of, y'all. It's not wood, it's not wood. Yay, Shay, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. So if this is not wood, it is, um, I don't know what it is, I have no idea. But it's fake. And then, uh, well, I don't care about what's on the inside because I'm not touching that. I'm only doing, you know, the pretty part on the outside part. Yes, Amy, something like that, something like that, which is so sad that I really seriously don't know much about Harry Potter at all. Um, you did, Christine. How funny is that? That is so cute. I love that you just did that, and I just brought it up. So the thing is, this stuff that's on the front here is supposed to look like leather because these are supposed to look like leather-bound books. These are the book bindings. And on the sides, it looks like, you know, the pages of the book. Let me turn it sideways for y'all. Okay, so that's the side. It looks like the pages of a book. So whatever this stuff is, it's not paper. Because if you turn it over and you look here where it's covered right here, you can see that when I try to pull it back, it's kind of like pleather. It's some sort of pleather or something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. Um, the thing, that reason I'm, you have to kind of know what you're working on. You need to know if you're working with veneer or wood or hasn't been stained before, hasn't been painted. And sometimes if you buy something that's got layers of stuff on it, you just don't know what you're painting over. You, you really don't know what's underneath there. So um, when you're painting with chalk paint, you really do need to know because it doesn't have any natural blockers in the paint. The paint is very porous and made with natural minerals, which is why it's so amazing to work with. It blends beautifully, it dries quickly, it's super hardy, um, you know, it like cementifies. That's a real, that's a super, super fancy word, right? Cementifies. Um, but when you put a top coat, a lot of times it'll draw through uh, wood tannins or stains. Um, through the paint. So you kind of need to block it first. You need to clean it really well and you need to know what you're working with. This is some kind of dyed pleathery fabric. So for sure this piece I need to prime. I'm going to prime it because I'm not painting it. Now if I were going to paint it black or burgundy or dark gray or hunter green or navy um, or even a hot pink um, like plum crazy that'd be fine but I'm not. I have a couple of ideas on two of the four books that I know that I'm gonna do. And um, I'm gonna have some white on here. So if you're gonna be working with white or light colors. Um, oh, Jackie, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so nice to have you. Thanks so much. Um, 
then you need to prime it. Okay, so first I'm gonna clean it. Y'all know that we always brag about Dixie Belle's cleaner. This is White Lightning. White Lightning comes like this and it's in, it's in crystal form and everybody always asks me what this is, but um, I honestly don't know. People tell me, people do tell me what it is, but they say to wear gloves, so I always wear gloves. I do not wear gloves when I paint and I do not wear gloves when I clean normal. I mean, not clean. When I prime and paint, I just don't. Um, so I, you're supposed to put two tablespoons in here with a little bit of warm water. I never do that either. I just dump some in the water. It works. It works for me. And then I just usually use the end of my brush. Yes, I'm cleaning with white lighting. So I stir it up and this business works. It works. It's amazing. It really is. I always tell people for years I used, uh, I mean, I've been painting furniture for 12, 15 years. So I always use just a vinegar, warm water and vinegar, and that really would cut through grease and gunk. Um, and I thought I was, you know, oh, doing such a good job and would, would clean. And then I, um, so when I first started working with Dixie Belle, I would use that and then I would follow it up with white lightning and I would get so much crap off of my pieces that I was like, ah. Oh. Mine, all those years of people getting furniture that I really didn't clean very well. So that's it. I Then I just take a, this is one of the, the Dixie Belle chip brushes, and I just brush it on. Brush it on. Sometimes I just use a sponge. I'll just sponge it on. But I really give it a good bath. I give it a really good bath. And I totally forgot to put my uh, microphone on, so I usually wear a microphone, and I will do that from now on. I'm sorry that I forgot because I, when we do these videos, we do work a lot, and I like for you guys to be able to hear me really well. So let me know if for some reason you can't hear, but I give it a good bath with this, and I'm gonna rub it down with a cloth or with paper towels, and then you do, the only thing you need to remember is that you really do need to rinse with water because you want to make sure that you get all of the white lightning off before you start putting paint on there. Okay, so does anyone have any questions about this? Uh, is Yes, I think it is. Trisodium phosphate. Thanks, you guys. That's the word. I don't know why. I have like a mental block to that. I don't know why I can't remember that. Okay, so here's my paper towels. I'm just going to wipe it down. Now, if this were a wood piece, um, like the china cabinet that I did recently or that huge armoire that I did for Wednesday University, this is just taking off... Uh, you never can see it very well on the video, but it's just taking off a little bit of the brown. Um, hey, Lori. Hi. Thank you, Crystal. Hi, sweetheart. Um, but when you're working with stained furniture, you'd be shocked how much of the stain that you actually can pull off with just the white lightning. And then, of course, you want to go ahead and do like a color blocking primer, which I am going to talk about that. Um, I love explaining the difference, why you would use, why do they have Boss Clear and why do they have, um, you know what, Jana, I am sure, I don't know exactly what this mix is. I don't know that it's straight TSP. I honestly should probably ask uh, Terry or Suzanne what their special mix is, um, but I'm sure that there's other stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, Delinda's like, buy, buy what? Okay, that is, my paper towel is really nasty, but anyway, um, whatever it is, whatever you are working with, I just want to make sure, whatever you decide to use, that you clean your piece really, really well um, before you start working with it. It's just so important. Let's get it nice and dried off, and then I'm just going to give it a little spritz with some water. This is just straight water. Going to get a light misting all over with water and wipe it down one more time just to make sure that I've gotten all of the white lightning off of there. Um, something else I was just saying. What was I talking about? And I got really distracted there. Uh, hello from Orlando, Susie says. It's on, is it on the label? Let me see. I'll tell you right here. What are y'all talking about? It says, um, no, it doesn't say that. It says, dissolve two heaping tablespoons of white lightning per gallon of hot water, squeeze excess from rag, rinse with clean warm water and wipe. Do not let puddle or set. 
Uh, do not let petals sit. Use with gloves in case of accidental ingestion. It tells you what to do. Um, flood with water 15 minutes, get prompt medical attention. Thoroughly wash with soap and water, fredness occurs. Skillfully, okay, skillfully, <laughs> skillfully combined with trisodium phosphate and numer numerous other inert compounds. Okay, so that's what is on the label. I've never seen that before. Never read it. I'm kind of a non-instruction reader. All right, so now I'm just wiping off my misted, uh, just to get off the last bit of the white lighting. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, so now my next step would be to prime it. Why do they have Dixie Bell primer in white and clear? There's a reason for that. However, I always wanna make sure that you understand that Dixie Bell Boss comes in white and clear and they both look white. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Ellen, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's so frustrating. Um, the Dixie Bell White, this is Boss. This is uh, Boss right here, give it just a second, there you go. Blocks odors stains and stops bleed through. That's what it stands for. Blocks odor stains and stops bleed through. Um this is white, but if you get it if you order clear, it will also look white. It doesn't look as white as this, but it definitely is not clear in the jar. So don't freak out if you order it. Um if you buy it from a retailer, of course you would probably ask them, but if you've never seen it before and you've never used it, which I highly recommend it. Um you are gonna get it and it will be white. And it goes on white and when it dries, it dries completely clear, which that, I love that. I love that you can see where you've been. So if you're working on a huge piece, like a huge armor that's eight feet tall and four feet wide, and you're trying to prime that whole piece and you wanna use clear, you you know start on one side and you move around, you can't remember where you've been or you get called away and you come back, you can't remember where you've primed or where you haven't. However, you can see like a shift in the sheen. And if you get back to it before it dries, you can still kind of see where you've been. And I love that. That's when you're using the clear. But once it's dry, it's completely clear. Hi, Carmelina. Hi, honey. Um, so, Georgia something, Georgia tuning in, just started using Dixie Belle and love it. I'm not sure uh, where that says. Okay, you're tuning in from Georgia. My sister-in-law lives in Georgia and I've turned her on to Dixie Belle and she has found a retailer um, like three retailers right around her. She lives near Peachtree City. Um, she's got one there that's a retailer there. Uh, oh my gosh, she said the selection's amazing. So, why do you use white and why do you use clear? This piece right here, I'm not gonna distress. I'm not gonna distress it. I'm not gonna rough distress it, wet distress it. I am not gonna bring through any anything on this piece right here. If this were a piece that were a gorgeous carved dresser with gorgeous wood, I might wanna bring some of the wood through. If you plan on bringing any of the wood through at all as you skillfully paint and play with your finish, um, I would, any retailers in Chicago? You guys speak up if you guys know any retailers in Chicago. And Angie, if you'll just go to Dixie Bell's website, you can, they have a search bar at the top where our retailer search, and you can uh, search for your zip code and it'll, it, they keep it up to date. They're really good about that. So it, you can find one that way. Um, anyway, if you're gonna bring wood through it all, I would use clear. If you're gonna do any distressing, um, if you're gonna do color washing, I like to do a lot of color washing and I spray a lot of water and it washes off a lot of the uh, paint. It washes back the paint and brings some of the wood through. If you do that, um, then I would use clear, okay? No one knows that you've got primer on there. It just looks like your wood, so that looks amazing. However, if you are wanting to color block or you have no plans at all in painting and bringing wood back through, then I use white. That's what I do. But um, if you're gonna, I use a lot of black and white, black and white stripes, black and white Harlequin, black and white check. Because of that, I like to use white most of the time because it really does color block for my whites really, really well. And you don't get any, you don't get any bleed through or anything like that. So on this piece right here, I'm going to cover this whole thing in Boss White, Dixie Belle Boss White, okay? Um, from Grapevine Decor in Grimesland, North Carolina. I love when you retailers hop in, you guys, if you've got a, um, 
If y'all are on and you're a retailer, please share where you are from. Oh, just, oh my goodness. And this, people, is why you do not wear things that you like when you're painting. Do y'all see that? All I did was take the jar of paint off. That's all I did. Will the clear enhance the wood color? No, not the primer, not the primer. However, if you use like a clear, uh, a clear wax or the clear top coats, they do. They brighten up the wood. Bummer, watch. Just a bummer. I'm gonna have to go buy myself another $5 tank at Target. <laughs> I know, Kristen, just you think, okay, I don't need to put my apron on. Lo and behold, every time, holy cow. Um, anyway, um, uh, and all I did was take the lid off. That's all I did. Um, what was I, what were we saying? I don't remember what I was saying. I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, so this primer will not enhance wood. If you use the clear, she asked, would it enhance the wood? That's a really good question. And no, it doesn't. It actually sort of dulls it. So it, because it's, it's giving your piece grit and tooth so it dries with a very 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 flat look and it oh man kim <laughs> i'm sorry i know Lori. i know just should be throwing it around right but just not have my 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 good jeans on and my tank top um anyway it gives it a sort of a flat and dull finish so no it won't, it's not gonna enrich your wood at all. Oh, Linda wants me to water spray it. <laughs> you think? I don't know, it's the primer. Nah, I don't know, okay. Okay, all right, we're gonna move on. So, that is my brush that I had with my white light. So I'm gonna move on with, um, now the, the, the uh, primers are not oil-based, they are a water-based, they wash out really, really well, whether you're using the white or the clear, it does not matter. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, thank you, I'll do that. No, Ellen, it's not. I wouldn't have sprayed my shirt had I had a white shirt on. No, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna use my Dixie Belle brush. I can use my better brushes when I'm, when I'm using this a long time ago, when I used to use other types of primers, oil-based primers, alcohol-based primers. I would always use just uh, cheap brushes or uh, chip brushes that were really cheap or old brushes because that stuff didn't wash out of my brushes really well and it really trashed my brushes. These, I can use my Bell brushes just like this. This is my mini that I use, I love it and it, it washes right out of here. And you guys, I've probably used this brush 75 times at least, at 100 times. And um, it holds up super, super well, bounces back. The, the bristles are still a burgundy color, just like they were. Um, and I use my scrubby soap to wash this out. I use my scrubby soap. I know I have a lot of retailers on here, but guys, if for some reason you don't have a retailer near you, you know that you can order from us brand ambassadors when we do the videos. We put our link at the top of the video. So my link is up there. It's my affiliate link and you can order your brushes. You can get your cleaner, your primers, your scrubby soaps, um, just by clicking and following that link. Jean, thank you. Thanks. Look, y'all want to see them up close? Can you see it? They have the cutest tassels like cross and heart and aren't they adorable and it's and uh y'all just probably saw it my nose sorry and i might have food in my teeth um oh Kristen, i will this is our lady of the guadalupe is that what it's called thanks um i will share a link with my earrings actually these are if you want to go to on instagram or facebook they're called best blends b-l-e i mean sorry b-e-s-t dash blends, B-L-E-N-D-S, or best underscore blends, B-L-E-N-D-S, and you can see them there. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get started. This is when I turn my back to you. So, I want to talk to you guys. This has great blocking. Look at that. We're going over black, solid black on these pieces with a lot of imprint. There's no texture on these pieces though guys all of that that you're seeing is just uh printed in that that faux whatever it is so i'm not going to be doing any paint blending on these pieces so i'm going to actually open my drawers and do more of a finish you know we all are 
so into the blending and the drippy organic look, but I'm not doing that on these. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, and I would love for you guys to give me some input when I tell you my, I have a couple of ideas, okay? A couple of ideas. Um, but we are, we're not gonna do them today, but I would like to decide today, and then I'll finish them next Wednesday. Now, next Wednesday, I am going live again, but I'm going live on my own page at the same time until the following Wednesday in June is when I start every single Wednesday. So I'll be here every Wednesday starting in June, but I'll finish this project. If you really like this book project, I'll start it next Wednesday on my page at seven o'clock as well. Okay, so I'm gonna do more of a clean look. So I'm opening my drawers, um, and I could take them out, but for the purposes of shooting the video, you can see better this way, and I'm just gonna leave them out. Um, there are no in-between, well, yeah, there's no in-between. Do you know how on a dresser, you sometimes have exposed dresser bar in between? Um, but this, this doesn't have that. They, they cover completely, so. Um, it does have a little lip on the sides that I'm going to cover here. And I will be painting the entire piece, not just the drawers, but we're going to focus on the drawers for the purposes of what we're doing today. All right, so there's that. Let me open this one. I have gotten a little bit on here already. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start talking to y'all about what my ideas were. I know that we are all super into furniture transfers right now which are amazing, and I know that y'all know that I have like a love-hate relationship with furniture transfers. I do love them, and I, 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 uh, I give examples with using them a lot. Karen, can we just get to the painting? We are, I'm painting, that's what we're doing. So uh, I do use furniture transfers quite a bit when I am working on my pieces. Um, I didn't like them at first because I felt like, you know, I just liked hand painting my own designs, but you know what? Some of you are afraid to even do what I'm doing right here, just prepping and priming. Um, so really, are you seriously gonna just wanna hand paint your designs when you haven't even gotten the courage up to paint the piece itself? So uh, I decided to start using transfers and it really does, it makes everyone feel like an artist. Um, it makes everyone feel super successful with their project, and I like that. That's what I'm after, is helping you guys to feel successful with your project. So, um, you have, Jackie, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that it's something that you like. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, prime the top of this as well. So, what I'm thinking is I have a, I'm going to show you what I have out to design this and for whoever said can we just get to the painting um we are talking about prepping and then also <laughs> sure thank you we're talking about not just painting we're talking about prepping and preparing our piece so that the painting works and then we also like to talk about design i do anyway because my pieces are not just a solid color. My pieces have a lot of patterns that are mixed together. And a lot of people ask me, how do you come up with those designs? So I like to explain that. And let's talk about our options when we look at this piece. Do I really just want to put all one color on it? Maybe I don't want to color blend on it. Maybe I want it to tell a story. And so that's what this is about, is designing designing piece. Thanks, you guys. Okay, so I'm glad that you all are with me and y'all understand why, you know, why I'm talking. I'm not just up here just talking to be talking. Um, I really did. I want y'all to see the entire process and what I go through myself when I'm preparing for a piece. Now, did I have to paint this piece? No, I didn't. I knew that I needed to do, um, come up with something to do for you guys on tonight's program. And I looked around my house, which I never do. I usually do custom orders and I usually have uh, a big piece that I'm either doing for a course or a piece that I'm doing for a client. But tonight I didn't have that. And I thought, you know what? Let me find, let me be, let me be the average person that's probably watching that doesn't have a custom order and doesn't have a, uh, a class that they have to teach. And that is a great question, Tara. I will answer that in just a second. Um, so what if I just got a, 
I had a piece that's bugging me in my house and I was wishing I could paint it. Or what if I bought some paint for the first time and I didn't know what to paint? And it, you can, you can just walk around your house and find something like this and get it ready and just go for it. Um, do I always prime? No, I do not always prime. That's a really good question. So what did I just paint recently? Oh, did anyone see my nightstands that I posted on Facebook today on Tracy's Fancy? If you didn't, if you'll go over to Tracy's Fancy and look, I posted them today, this afternoon around lunchtime. It's a picture of a, um, one nightstand. I don't think I showed them side by side yet, but it's actually two nightstands. I might have. Um, very pretty, color blended, gold leafed, waxed, uh, highlighted with waxes. I did not prime those pieces. They were a light wood to begin with. I didn't feel like they were gonna bleed. I mixed drop cloth um, into manatee gray. Um, I did some blending and I just didn't feel like they would need it. They were a nice, um, yes, please do go look. Please do, go check them out. Um, they are, thank you, Eddie. They're really, really pretty. And y'all, I did both nightstands in under two hours in under two hours. So uh, from start to finish, pulled them out, cleaned them. I didn't have all my products with me. I just cleaned them with vinegar and water. That's all I had. Got them nice and clean. I did not have any primer with me. I was like, I think we can do this. Painted them. They uh, they look amazing. Under two hours. And they're big. They, are, they were way bigger than this piece right here. So, you know, it's easy to do. You just gotta decide to do it. You just go for it. I was traveling, visiting, and they were like, please do this. We ended up doing a whole bedroom, which I'll show y'all next week. Okay, so I don't always prime. That was a good question. Ooh, I just like did a ballerina spin, not so gracefully. Um, that was a really good question. So the reason I didn't prime, I didn't feel like I was gonna have bleed through. It was a nice wood finish. I didn't feel like it needed. You do not have to prime a chalk paint. Only if you think that your paint isn't gonna stick or, uh, or you think that you're gonna have stains or bleed through or that maybe it smells or something like that. That's when you would want to use Boss, okay? Okay, so while this dries, I'm gonna just, I just have a jar of plain water over here and I'm just gonna drop my brush down in there and let that sit while we talk so that my Boss Primer does not, um, does not get on there. So let's talk about design now, y'all. I don't think we're gonna paint. I think we're gonna talk about design. So we have prepped, we're ready to go, and we're ready for paint. I will tell you that that is one coat. It's amazing, amazing coverage and um, it does not take very long to dry. Now, yes, when this video is over, I am going to paint the sides as well, and I'll paint the feet as well. I mean, not paint, but I'm gonna go ahead and boss prime those as well. You guys are so nice, thank you. So, uh, let's talk about design. So, what I do know, when you design a piece, and I've talked about this with some of you here before, I'm gonna take these off because they drive me crazy, so I'm done with the gloves. Um, it is nice to have a starting off point. So is Boss like Kills? Boss is not like Kills. Um, well, I think Kills does now have a water base, but I think it's usually an oil base. Am I wrong? I know that shellac is an alcohol base. Um, Kills has an oil base. Maybe they have a water base as well. Kills stinks to high heaven. Boss has no odor. It actually smells different than the paint, but it has like very, very, very little odor. And it is made with uh, much more natural materials and it dries quickly as fast as chalk paint dries. Um, and it works better. It has it has a better blocking um, than the Kills does. So I um, hope that answers your question. Uh, if you have to boss, will it take the place of slick stick? Now, slick stick they came up with um, for pieces like glass or, uh, if you're working on, um, you know, Ikea. Ikea makes that furniture that has that baked on finish that is super, super, uh, super slick. And I've never, I've actually painted right on glass and didn't need slick stick, but some people were having some trouble with adherence and they really felt like that it was good. It would behoove them to formulate something that would work really, really well for that. Even though I feel like if you if you know the right technique, you can get chalk paint to stick to just about anything. But a slick stick does work super, super well on those things. But does, will Boss stick to those things? I, You know what, that's a good question, I don't know. What I do know is that slick stick doesn't work in place of Boss, meaning slick stick is only to give you tooth and grit, and but will not, color block and block stains. 
Kills adhesion is water-based, Ellen is saying. Okay, okay, I didn't know that. Um, but I can't stand the smell of it. <laughs> That's what I do know is I can't. And you know, y'all y'all don't know, but I have like a history of, um, I have a liver disease and I have to be super careful with smells and stuff like that. And that's what I love about these products is that I don't have to worry about the fumes and things like that because I work in an enclosed area. Um, and it, I really like being able to work without a mask on my face because if it's got fumes, then I've got a mask. Okay, so she's saying that one doesn't have a stink to it either. So, Melissa, Melissa, I still have your bottle of oil I need to mail you. It's sitting on my desk and I bought a little uh, padded envelope today so I can wrap that up and get that coming your way, okay? Okay, so let's talk about design. It's always nice to have an inspiration piece. So do you know what room you're gonna use it in? No, I really don't. But I will I will use this in my house somewhere. So I know that I need to kind of go with colors that will go in my house pretty much in any room, which would be like grays and blacks thrown in with a little bit of maybe pinks or berries or turquoises. So um, I have that to go off of. I know that I wanted to have black and white stripes, one of the books. And then I bought this, you guys, at Home Goods the other day, not because I had a birthday party to go to, or not because, um, does Dixie Belle have a glaze that we can tint? Hmm. That's a really, that's a good question. I know that you can tint the waxes. You can tint the spray wax. You can tint the regular waxes, but I don't, I guess you could tint I don't think they have just like an empty glaze. I don't know, Dixie Bell, are you on? Can you answer that question? Because that's something I haven't done. I actually glaze a lot with just paint and not using actual glaze. I just do like color washes with really watered down paint, but it's because I work fast and quickly and I don't need that extra open time. So you can't tint clear coat to make glaze, Kristen's saying. I'm sorry, I don't have, a, I don't have an answer to that. I'm sorry about that. That is something that, that's the two things I need to ask about. Anyway, I found this and I really liked it. Do y'all not love this? It is um, like a buffalo check, but it's sideways. So if I were to use it like this, it's gonna go on more like a, a diagonal buffalo check. I love it. Okay, so she's saying pearlescent glaze that you could, yes, I had said you can, you can tint the wax, the, the clear besting wax with paint which would really do the same thing, except you have to wipe back, but you do that with the glaze as well. So I wonder, Penny, if the pearl, if you tint the pearlescent glaze, if you still, does it make your paint pearlescent or does the paint overpower the pearlized look? And then I just water down my paint <laughs> and, and make my glazes that way. So, um, Okay, so this is some paper that I really, really like. I don't know if you can see up close, but this is what it looks like. I like that it wasn't, you know, it's gonna go on at an angle like that. So I like this a lot. So this is kind of my starting off point. This is not black and white, it's black and it's a very, very, very off white. So I would call this either drop cloth or I love the flea market aged ivory. I love it a lot. I know that we are dealing with, see that? Look how pretty that is. You can see that really well. See the white sticker? So that white sticker is like cotton, like the color cotton. So imagine the white sticker versus the paint jar that's around it. You can see the difference between the white and the off-white. I really, really like it. And it goes really well with this square right there. Do y'all like this paper? Y'all are all off in the glaze thing. So I really, really like this. So I want to do black and I think I'm going to use caviar and the aged ivory like this as a stripe. So um, you buy those to use as table runners. What do you buy to use these? The, oh, 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 Lori, you're saying for parties. Like at parties, I love the paper at Hobby Lobby. I mean, not Hobby Lobby, at Home Goods. Don't you guys? I love it. Yes, Melissa, I love the aged ivory. I really, really like it. Okay, so Lori says yes, she likes the paper. So I was thinking about um, doing every other one, but not, I wanna, do, I wanna do some sort of florally bringing in my pinks on two of the drawers, and then I wanna do black and white stripes on a third drawer, and then I wanna do this angled, whatever you call this, Harlequinish, buffalo checkish on another drawer. So um, that's where I'm going. So I think, 
that I like this so much that I'm gonna put it on this bottom drawer because that's the biggest drawer. And then I think that would mean that this, this drawer up here would need to be the black and white stripe, which I will do with my stripe technique, which I've showed you guys so many times. And so many of y'all um, watch these videos a lot, so I'm sure you've seen it. But if you look back for the one where I did the boho bed, the yellow and white boho bed, I showed y'all in a video, um, I striped the footboard with you guys. I've done a lot of stripe videos. So um, I definitely will do that next week and the buffalo check down here. What I've never done before with Dixie Belle products is decoupage. Now, I used to be a decoupage queen years ago before we staged photos as I used to sell, you know, literally thousands of pieces, thousand-ish pieces on Etsy. Um, I used to decoupage all the time. Desks were my favorites and I'm really good at it. Um, I never do it anymore, but I always used Mod Podge. But I have heard that you can decoupage with um, the, clear, the clear top coats with Dixie Belle and I've never done it. So I am gonna come back Next Wednesday, I won't be here, but I'll be on my page. And um, Gloria is saying that she's used Gator High. Gloria, tell us about it. Tell us. I want to hear. I want to know. Because right before this video, I went, um, oh, good, Linda. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, I went on and watched Amy, and she decoupaged with a clear top coat. Um, it was like a tray, a little table tray with a napkin, but I didn't, wasn't, and she used an ironing technique, which I've never used before, um, and I wasn't real sure if I would use the ironing technique when I'm using a paper, like a thick wrapping paper, versus, um, oh, Gloria saying, okay, Gloria, good, thank you, and thanks for putting that up here. Gator high for decoupage, so y'all are saying gator high, right? All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of research between now and next Wednesday and build up my own confidence, and I'm going to do this live with you guys next week. Lori is saying yes, she just did it. So I'm gonna do it with paper, and we use the iron technique and gator hide. Yay. Jean's saying she's done it with all of them. <laughs> I'm cracking you up. I mean, you know, I'm supposed to be this big, major, experienced painter, and... <laughs> and I've not, I haven't decoupaged. Sorry, I got all, you know what? I, I did it for so long and and I don't know, I just put it away and I just quit decoupaging. <laughs> I just quit. Okay, Amy. So thank you, Amy, for your video on YouTube because I did watch it. You made like a little wine table, wine tray or something. Parchment paper on top of ironing. I did catch that. It seemed super simple and super easy. And did y'all see the tiny little iron she uses? It's like a little, like a little dollhouse iron. I was cracking up. I'm like, what? I've never even seen that kind of iron. I gotta get me an iron like that. Eddie, you're so sweet. I love you. Thank you too. Okay, so when y'all come back next Wednesday on my page uh, for my last Wednesday over there, um, I'm gonna own a tiny iron. I'm getting a, I'm gonna get a little tiny iron and I'm gonna have decided which top coat I'm gonna use and I may or may not have practiced on a board before I get on live video with you guys and let y'all watch me. Oh, it's a quilter's iron, Penny. She said it was like three or five bucks. Really? Okay, because my big old iron, that is not even possible. Jackie says she has one of those. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. So anyway, one more thing. So with the black and off-white, you guys, I don't know about y'all, but I am addicted to the molds. Love the molds so much. And one of my favorite molds, I have two favorite molds. These are all by um, Redesign. I love these, whatever you call these. I don't know what this is, but I use them all the time. I use them, I make them go where they touch and they make a circle. I make them leaves to flowers. I make them go in lines. Um, they said to get it at a craft store, so I'm gonna, I think maybe Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby is what I'm thinking. But my favorite mold, even over the roses, is this one. I stinking love this mold right here. I like it. I like that you can do them back to back and make a big one. I like how big it is. I like big things. I don't like little tiny things like this. So I was thinking, look how, look how good of a fit this is, y'all. Look at this mold. So I was thinking 
doing a mold there, and I think it also will fit on this one. So if I do paper down here and stripes here, stripes I probably won't bother, but the paper I could still do some something on top of it like this, and then still do some gilding waxes on top of that because you know it's gonna have gold on it. And then the top drawer in this drawer right here, I probably will also add some molds to, but then I wanna do a, um, a redesign transfer. So I'm thinking I've always, always, always wanted to use this transfer and I've never used it. I know it kind of got overused for a while, but I still love it so much and I love the colors and it matches the, the colors that I'm using, the black and the ivory, the caviar and the aged ivory. So I'm thinking about using this one on one of the drawers and then um, I haven't quite decided on the other drawer. So I'm going to show you what my workshop table looks like right now. Because when I'm inspired and I get going, and just like you, when you get going, if you're a crafter and you've got and you've got stuff at home, just get inspired and just start pulling, pulling from your stash, just pulling from your stash. And this is what my table looks like right now. That's how many transfers I couldn't decide between. Um, those are that. These are my molds that I like. These are my stacked molds. There's my spray. There's my primer. There's my paper. And then over here on this side, I've got my paint colors that I'm going to use. Which, by the way, this is Plum Crazy, which is one of my all-time favorites. So I know I want to use Plum Crazy, and I'm going to use Mason Dixon Gray. Let me show y'all and Caviar. So right there, those are the those are the four colors that I definitely want to use with a metallic gold. Real quick, I have to show y'all this transfer. Have y'all seen it? It's called Hopeful Wishes. It is two pages long and it comes in length. And I thought that this would have been so perfect, but I would have had to cut it up and I really didn't wanna waste it. But it says, always believe something wonderful is about to happen. I Love this. Always believe something wonderful is about to happen. And this side says love, and then it says uh, beautiful and home sweet home, and it looks like watercolor, brushed watercolor, or brushed acrylic roses. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the colors. So I may, I may have to cut this up a little bit and use that on one of the drawers because I don't have words. I don't have words, and I need some words. So. Um, if I've got the, the buffalo check harlequin here and the stripes here and then the roses here, I may need to put some words up here. So, you know, I don't know. Something. I'm not sure. But I love this. I did a bed one time, y'all, a queen size bed, and I had a lady um, ask me to paint on the footboard. Have y'all ever seen it? It says, uh, it's black and white striped, the whole bed. It's gorgeous, it's a huge bed. And she had me put on the footboard in a circle. I hand painted, um, it's never too late for a happy ending. I painted that bed for her um, and angel wings on the headboard. I did angel wings on the headboard. Um, can you turn on the mirror function so we can read it? I'm cockeyed enough. <laughs> I don't know how to do that right here without messing it up. I'm not sure. Um, I think I have to use the tools. I'm not sure. Nope, not that one. Let me see if I lose you. Oh, tools right here. Here we go. Okay, let me turn it on. Hold tight. Please hold, I always say. Please hold. There's that. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. She wants to see it. She's cockeyed. She's cockeyed. All right, here we go. Always believe something wonderful. Oh, I'm losing you. Is about to happen in these gorgeous roses and it comes with this one too so they could really go like on an armoire one on each door um man i just i don't know i thought they were gorgeous but i really didn't want to cut it up because i thought it would be so cool to put those words on there because that's the beautiful thing about these transfers is you can just cut them up and use them how you want um so I don't know, but I have multiple transfers over there. I've got a lot of their gold leaf transfers over there. I'm just not sure, but I think we're off to a good start, you guys. I think we're off to a good start. I gotta turn that mirror function off because it just really jacks with my brain. Okay, it, when you're looking, it's like, I'm talking with this hand and it's got it over here. So anyway, I think that's it, you guys. It, it We went way longer. I know I never can keep it at just 30 minutes, ever, ever, ever. So that is what we did. I am so glad that you guys knew about this piece. I do not see any bleed through at all coming through. Um, so had we painted it, 
without primer, maybe it would have been fine. I'm not sure. Um, it, I, for those of you that asked about my earrings, I will be sure and share the link for them. Um, I have lost my uh, comments because I turned on these. <laughs> I turned on the tools. I don't even know where to find y'all now. Where are you? Where are you? Where'd you go? <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of the tools. Go away. Go away. Can't do it. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we are. Uh, nothing. I don't want anything. Anyway, guys. Okay, you guys have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful holiday weekend, Memorial Holiday weekend. I wish you a um, a wonderful, restful Wednesday night, and I look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday night while y'all teach me, me, y'all teach me how to decoupage. Okay. I'll be I'll be studying up until then. I will see y'all next Wednesday over on Tracy's Fancy, and then we'll be back here every single Wednesday night after that. Okay, y'all take care. We'll see you soon. And I gotta go see if I can find the finish button. Okay, I seriously, I don't know what I've done here. This is what I get for trying to work work things. When um, let's see. <laughs> Y'all just go. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs> I seriously don't know how to get off here. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. This is like a three ring circus. Okay. Thanks, Eddie, for hanging in. Love you guys. See you later. Bye.